Hello everyone and welcome to Journey Time where we learn all about people's journeys and joining me today is a very special guest. We have Ferris Musa, also known as Faye. Welcome to Journey Time. How you doing, Hannah? I'm good, I'm How good. How you doing, girl? <laughs> this guy is a personality, <laughs> but even more than that, he is a local artist here in Atlanta. He's a rapper, he's an entrepreneur, and he's one of the most amazing people you'll meet out here in the streets killing the game. Welcome to the show, Ferris. Wow, big praise. <laughs> I mean, praise. praise where it's due, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're a humble guy. You're a humble guy, so. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes. I do want to draw um, some attention to a post that you put up today. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see in this Instagram post that he shared, thanking his supporters and fans for hitting 1 million streams in 2018 and 4 million in total. And you wrote in the caption here, you said, no label, no PR, no management, and you hit that. Mm -hmm. You hit that. Yeah. Can, can we give him a round of applause? So without those factors involved, can you tell me what were some of the factors that helped you reach that level of success? First and foremost, uh, my best friend Kalecha, you know, like we hold each, uh, each other accountable mm -hmm. with this music stuff. So like we work really hard in, in, in this room, actually, we moved the studio. And, um, you know, everything that you, everybody hears on retailers is made in this room right here. So like from engineering and mixing and, and putting the song out, everything starts right here. And it's just consistency, just putting the music out. People gravitate to sort to, to certain records. The, the, ba the, the only like downside about putting out music is you don't know what people are gonna gravitate towards. Mm -hmm. So you think, you might think you have a hit and you're like, everybody's gonna love this. And you spent like eight hours on it. And then um, to like a song that you spent like 30 minutes on. They so you it. don't get to choose mm -hmm. what people like. But um, I think, as far as you know, gaining that fan base in those streams is just consistency, uh, work ethic. If you care and the people genuinely see that you care about your product, they'll start to slowly give in. And uh, you gotta give them something that's worth listening to, worth buying, worth uh, um, associating themselves with. And they, you, you want them to feel like they belong because they do, I mean. Um, but that's honestly all it is. There's no like hack or anything like like there's no PR like I said I don't even have a manager like um, you know Kalechi and his brother like we consult each other but there's no nobody making executive decisions on my behalf that's deep uh, yeah, that's really deep I mean you're doing this on your own I met you several years ago mm -hmm. at a concert here in Atlanta you know, even then you were grinding, grinding, and you were working multiple gigs. And we talked about how on social media you see this, you know, highlight reel, if you will. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about some of the challenges that you've been through and, you know, that you overcome over the years to get to where you are? Um, I mean, as you know, when, when, you're, when you have a, a hobby or something that you want to do, we're at the age where we need to financially support ourselves. So, um, you know, doing the music thing, I was working, I was helping, you know, I was helping my, um, my dad out his, at his restaurant. I was managing his restaurants and music actually t came to a complete stop. It came to a halt because I was trying to like manage these restaurants and I kind of lost track of what I loved and my passion. I kind of spiraled, you know, kind of downhill like because I didn't really see a purpose. And, you know, the restaurant thing is my dad's dream. It's not mine. And I was just trying to help because um, they had like a management issue at the time. And, um, you know, I called Kalechi up. And this is when Kalechi, he, he won like the Mountain Dew, the, the Mo Mountain Dew sponsorship and stuff like that. So he was moving and both of our lives were moving at like very different paces. I was working a conventional job and he was, you know, touring America basically. Mm -hmm. And I called him up one day and I was just like, yo, like this job isn't making me happy. Like, let's get back in the studio, kind of as, as a therapy. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just like, let's get back in the studio. Let's, let's make music. And Kalechi was down from day one. And then um, ever since then, like, I got back into the music thing. Um, and of course, you know, I had some money saved up from, you know, the restaurant. Um, and I would started working like less hours at the restaurant. So it was like, went from 50 hours a week to 40 to 30 to 20 then to zero yeah. okay, and then you realize oh I could sustain like Whew. I could I could live off of this stuff it's now amazing yeah and it's, it's the best feeling that feeling of when you realize what you're doing um, that you're passionate about is literally a sustainable lifestyle yeah music is turning uh, especially with streaming and stuff now like 
and me and Kalechi talk about it all the time, is there's a middle class. There's gonna be a middle class that forms off of music. So you're gonna see musicians and rappers making sixty, seventy thousand dollars and living modest lifestyles off of their art. You know what I'm saying? And they're not gonna be there's gonna be a group of people who aren't so famous that they can't walk out their house. Like I can still walk out the house and there's gonna be hundreds of people like me and you know, making a a median you know, a, a medium, like they're gonna be middle class, mm -hmm. technically, off of their music, 60, 70,000, they could go to the supermarket. <laughs> Some people might recognize them here and there, but they're not so famous to the point where it takes over their whole life. Right. So we're moving into that era where like the middle class rapper is gonna be a, a thing. And I know? think though with impact, right? So whether you're uh, touching, you know, one person or a million people, mm -hmm. you're touching people. And I know through your music, you have this style, you know, you shed light on different social issues. You talk about your upbringing, your family, all these amazing, incredible things. And I want to kind of talk about a song that you do have um, mm -hmm. called Wallahi. Mm -hmm. And it's just so interesting and so awesome. And I think that speaks a lot about who you are as a Muslim Palestinian American man mm -hmm. in America. Can you talk about that song? how it formed and what it means so as you know because you know you're from East Africa and our Somalian brothers and sisters use the term Wallahi probably a hundred times a day without knowing but Wallahi is the translation for basically um, I swear to God and it's swearing on you know what I'm saying if, if you don't believe someone it's like yo Wallahi I'll do this or Wallahi I'm gonna um, pay you back or it's kind of like you're, when you use it, it's like, please trust me because I'm swearing on, on you know, a higher being. And um, it's become so, um, it's become so common in just our speech. It's basically incorporating that word in uh, a word that I heard my whole entire life and putting it into a song um, that, that appeals to, to people who are not just Arab or Somali or Muslim, but people want to learn what, is that, what does that word mean. Well, I hear you tripping. I don't want to listen. You don't have no vision. The top back is missing. It's like circumcision. My girl is a missus. And I feel like the term Wallahi has been so diluted now. Um, because when people say it, it's, it's a very strong statement. It's, I swear to God. You know what I'm saying? And, and some people just say Wallahi off of just, off of culture. Like, and they'll just be like, Wallahi, I'll do this. And they'll be lying. But it's not that big of a deal to them because that word is thrown, thrown around so commonly. So, uh, me personally, I try not to use the word wallahi um, a lot. And um, if I am using the term, I want it to be about something important. And this song was important to me. And that sort of takes us to the next uh, question. So you are, you know, Palestinian American. Mm -hmm. We can relate. Both of our parents came to this country as immigrants, as refugees, and here we are today, mm -hmm. which is really, really special. How has that experience, you know, growing up as the son of immigrants, as a Muslim Palestinian American man, shaped you into the person you are today? Um, it just it just taught me how to maneuver through certain areas, just how to maneuver through in America, period. Um, I'd like to think I'm as American as anybody else because I was born here and I never lived anywhere else, but that's not the case when you, um, you travel and you stop at a rural gas station in, in rural Virginia or something, people looking at you like, what is this guy? Or who is this guy? Or the only images they see of a Palestinian is on CNN and they're blowing some stuff up, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it didn't really hit me till after September 11th, but um, as, as American as me and you are, um, the sad reality is we're not gonna be accepted everywhere in America. And that's something you, you need to learn how to maneuver in certain areas. Atlanta, I feel like is home because um, it's so diverse. You know what I'm saying? You don't get a lot of dirty looks. You got mm -hmm. East Africans and Arabs and a large black, there's like black Hollywood. And you know, of course you got white people and you got Asians and everybody kind of lives in unison here. But that's not the case. Anytime you drive 15, 50 miles outside of a, a huge city, you have to unfortunately tread lightly. And can you talk about how you sort of use your music as a tool to shed light on some of the points that you mentioned? I'm not trying to push an agenda or anything. I'm just trying to make great music, you know what I'm saying, and happy music. So when if somebody likes a song and they do the research, who, who, who raps this song? And they look it up and they'd be like, oh, wow, it's an Arab American. It's 
my favorite song came from somebody who happens to be Arab, who happens to be Muslim. I like this record. I hope that that could shape or change, you know what I'm saying, the narrative. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, I got this comment one time on YouTube. It was actually, this is, um, this is actually crazy. So I like, <laughs> okay. got this uh, comment on YouTube and it was about this song called Peace. And this random guy, of course, anonymous, was like, yo, this is my favorite song at the moment. It sucks that I won't ever go to one of his shows because of people who look like him. Basically insinuating, like, I guess I might blow myself up at a concert or something. So, like, mm. I was just like, it sucks that this could be somebody's favorite song, but they won't support farther than that because of how I look. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, my main goal is to, okay, cool, like, you like this song? I want you to I want you to know that there are people like me mm -hmm. from my background who are involved in the arts and who who make really cool stuff that you could relate to. It's sad that you you know people have to feel that way and and like you mentioned September 11th earlier and how that sort of changed some of the things but shout out to you for really like still pushing and promoting positivity as you know this is what this channel is about and you are still doing that yeah. even through some of the negative comments and negative um, energy that is out there in the world which I, I want to bring up your hat. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk about what that means? I know it's a tribute to your mother. Yeah so so the hat is basically an ode to my mother. It's basically like, you know, you see like cartoons and they'd be like the masculine characters with the, you know, they pull up their sleeve and it's like mom with an arrow in it. Mm -hmm. So I made my own rendition. It looks like it says Lolo, but it's actually read from right to left in their Arabic letters and it actually translates to mama, act like M-A-M-A. -M -A. And, you know, we're on our fourth, I think our fourth or fifth season of like merch. Yeah. And it's been se selling pretty well, so. Well, clearly he loves his mom, yeah. loves what she and his, his parents have done for you. And Absolutely. I mean, that's that's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. I definitely am going to copy a hat. So you're going to see wow. me rocking mine. Definitely. Hey, you're going to see me rocking yours. Hey, too, the joy, the... Hey, hearts. It's all about hearts, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to put you on blast, you know, okay. since we're talking about family. I'm mm -hmm. going to put him on blast. So he actually, y'all was a valedictorian. Oh, man. <laughs> valedictorian from Georgia State University of his class. And, you know, then he obviously became this up and coming and then very successful rapper. So what was the family's response? Well, mom was kind of like heartbroken, kind of. Even, even when I graduated college, like I remember getting off the stage at the Georgia Dome. This is when it was still up. And she was like, I was getting everybody a hug. She gave me a hug. It was like a light hug. She was like, I'm still not impressed. You gotta go get your master. And I was <laughs> like, course. yo, like, yeah. it was just terrible. Like, how could you say that to me? But I mean, you know, we come from tough skin and mm -hmm. they're always good. No matter how good, I, I could be a platinum selling artist right now. My mom would still probably like, you know what I'm saying? Like beat me up for like she, something small. She has high standards for you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, leaving the restaurant was, um, a decision that just kind of naturally happened. You know, like I told you, it was just 20 hours to 10 to five and it kind of slowly just drifted away. I still help with payroll and stuff like that. But my mom was just like, you know, she'll see me and she'll be like, what do you do? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just sit there, like, what do you do? And I'm just like, um, I make music. She was like, so like, how do you get money? And I'm just like, yo, like streaming. <laughs> and it's so hard to teach like your, mo your mom who yeah. comes from like literally a refugee village and teaching her that your son is doing music and, and that there's this thing called streaming that you could play your song and you get the royalties from that. And I'm not saying it's lucrative to the point where I could go buy cash out on two or three cars, but mm -hmm. I could support myself mm -hmm. and, and, you know, buy groceries and, and rent and you know sometimes even extra stuff like shoes and stuff like that just that when you want to spoil yourself this is intellectual property so when you're coming up with an idea and a concept you're creating it's not manual labor mm -hmm. so they're like I mean you're not working eight, 14 hours a day you're not getting up at four o'clock in the morning and, and sitting in traffic and going to work but she doesn't see the hours that we're sitting here trying to get a mix right or trying to write a record or or going back and forth between between producers and trying to get the right sound and it really occupies it's like being possessed for like three days like if you have a song idea and it's not sounding how you want it to it's the only thing on your mind somebody mm -hmm. could talk to you 
and you could hear words, but you just like you're just out of it until you get that idea across and that until it sounds clear and it sounds how you want it to in your mind. You have a you have a lot of vision. Yeah, like you have to have vision. So it's it's hard explaining to my mom, this is how I get paid, this is streaming, this is my distribution deal. Um a million people listened to your son last uh last year. Woo! You know what I'm saying? But it she it doesn't yeah. It doesn't translate for some reason. But even though it doesn't, right? Like, I'm sure that there are ways in which she supports you beyond anything, you know, we can imagine. Oh, yeah. And the love that she's given you and, you know, your family, I'm sure that plays a tremendous role in who you are today. Absolutely. Family so, is, is big, really big. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so if your mom, you know, happens to be watching, what would you say to her? I love you, mom. You'd be safe. She just got uh, landed in uh, the Middle East today so you be safe and i'll see you next month god willing amen amen yeah. to that so maybe some young aspiring rappers out there artists like any words that you may be able to share on just reaching their goals and you know pushing through yeah um it's honestly just having a vision and sticking with that vision um i feel like with time and with time and and the amount of passion you have for something and your resolve like when things get tough, a lot of people quit and stuff like that. I know a lot of people have been doing this music thing and they just stopped. You know what I'm saying? Kalechi's like the only one still going. And when I look to my right, you know, in college, it's like you look to your right, look to your left, one of you guys is gonna graduate. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that in the music industry. It's like, you know, you could have a bad month or, or two bad months in a row and be like, everybody hates me. And, and, and artists are really like emotional. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, why, don't, why aren't they listening to me? And they, they always make it about them. But it's just like you have two bad months and be out of the game and be like, well, I quit. I'm going to go do something practical. So I feel like it's those who stick with it. Uh, like we always say, it's a marathon. Just keep running, keep running. As, as, as long as you're progressing and getting better. I mean, some stuff isn't for some people. I'm not going to sit here and be like, you could be a terror, you know, have no, 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 uh, no melody or no sense of melody and stuff like that and you're like trying for 10 years and you're just not getting better you should probably stop but if like <laughs> just <laughs> you gotta have some talent right you, yeah you have and not even just talent i don't think i was born with the like the talent to make music i just feel like i learned it like you know what i'm saying if if you want to get better genuinely want to get better you'll i don't know it just happened it was almost like Kalechi will tell you it was almost like overnight like it was the difference between writing a, a good verse and a great verse, like once you write a great verse, you should always aspire to, to be better than that great verse. So it's like the trajectory is always up. Mm. But for some people, it's not. I mean, of course, life circumstances and how you feel emotionally plays into what type of music you make and how you're progressing. But um, just sticking with it, sticking with your passion, investing time into it, investing money into it, and um, living and breathing it honestly and it's a good balance too you don't you don't want to sit there and just be doing locked in a room for 22 hours doing music you know you want to balance you want family life you you want to go out see the world so you actually have content to write about and and you know things that re-inspire you so some great words there some very positive uh, words and as y'all know this channel is all about promoting positivity you're doing that you know you do that through your music through your concerts go check out his page you'll see a lot of amazing content and people from all over the world that stream that listen um, so why do you choose to promote positivity I feel like empathy is ingrained in all of us you know what I'm saying regardless of your circumstances I feel like you know um, most people have regard for other humans and, and you know human life and it just it's something that feels natural it doesn't feel contrived like it's what makes us as humans special we we want to help people out and promoting positivity isn't a burden you know what i'm saying it's just something that, that that you should be doing you know what i'm saying i mean we're all breathing and living and waking up every every morning and every morning every day is not going to be a good day i have bad days too i'm sure you do too Absolutely. and your outlook isn't as positive but it's just like i'm just tired goodness like the the world takes its toll on you mm -hmm. but uh you wake up the next day to live another day i guess so absolutely yeah. that's so real that's so yeah. real thank you for that and for anybody that is tuning in if they want to keep in touch follow along which y'all should check him out he's killing the game his music is really amazing and powerful thank how can you. they keep in touch uh at fayweather that's p-h-a-y 
Weather, W-E-A-T-H-E-R. All right, and then is that on all platforms? All, all platforms, yeah. Okay. Uh, Instagram is my main platform, so follow me there, please. Okay, well, there you have it. We appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for being here on Journey Time Thanks with us. Thanks for having us. us. Yay! Me Can and you and your whole just, imaginary crew. They, yeah, just they, <laughs> thanks for having me. I told y'all he was a character from the start, right? No, I literally, I was, just, I was just messed up. I was just like... Everybody, yeah. everybody, everybody here. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. Keep promoting positivity in your world, and we hope that you will also continue to promote it in yours. And you do the same. I got you. Ciao. <laughs> Bye, y'all.